All right, back again, Luke here. And as you can see in front of you, this is my old Gauntlet Legends arcade PCB. Now, this is one that, uh, if you've been around for quite some time, this is a board that I've been trying to work on and get running for uh, at least a couple of years now. Just not really had any luck with it. What originally happened with this board is it was working really well, and then one day it decided to die. There wasn't any video coming out of it, so I picked up a new video card and tried to uh, get a flash drive for it, and uh, eventually was able to get video for it. And then eventually the sound went out. And then I tried to see if I could get the sound to work by ordering a couple of uh, chips here and replacing those, but uh, the problem just seemed to continue. So uh, I left this thing. This thing has been sitting for a very long time, hasn't really had a chance to fire up. So what I did is I got on the net and did some hunting, and I've been trying to look for parts for this for a long time. So uh, the main part that I'm looking for was the soundboard here for this is a uh, Vegas 777 arcade hardware. And recently I was able to come across and pick up this. Now this is a uh, replacement board here. Now this was listed as untested, and uh, it's which usually means it's junk. Uh, and you can see that it hasn't been used for a very, very long time. The capacitors here are shot. They're all dented up and kind of leaning to the side. Those are going to definitely have to be replaced. It looks like it's been sitting in uh, a really kind of musty environment for a very long time. So I'm not really expecting a whole lot, but uh, on the other hand, I'm kind of hoping that maybe if I get this thing cleaned up here, we should be able to get some sound and get this board working 100%. Uh, you'll notice that the edge connector here too on both sides is uh, a little bit rough. That's uh, definitely been soldered. And things uh, It's not perfect at all. In fact, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really rough. But I'm kind of hoping that eventually we'll be able to get this thing plugged in and get some video, get some audio, and get a board working again. But the first thing we'll have to do is try and scrub this thing up. I'll see if I can replace these capacitors. Now, these are some really short ones. I don't think I have anything that short. I'm going to have to put in some of these longer or taller ones. But nonetheless, that should help out quite a bit. We'll get it all scrubbed up, replace the timekeeper battery, and see what happens from there. But this is the next project that I'm working on here, kind of hoping for the best. And we'll get this thing cleaned up, try and swap it out, and see what happens. But. I'll get on this and I'll be back in a little bit. Alright, so as you can see here, what I've done is I've tried to clean up these areas. What someone had done is they had put uh, other tabs over the top of it here um, just for an edge connector. I don't know why, but uh, probably because these were a little bit worn down, I'm guessing. But nonetheless, I tried to remove as much of the residue as possible and put these flat down again. On the other side, there's still uh, a bit of a piece missing but luckily it's conjoined with the one next to it, so it should be okay. Uh, the only major problem here uh, is just uh, trying to make sure that these things make contact. It looks like there's a little bit of residue still on the top. I'll try and scrap the, uh, scratch that off and see what we can do. The next step uh, we're going to do is try and replace these capacitors around here, and then we'll get on the board and start changing out chips and give it a shot. So I'm going to get on that, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the old caps. These are the old caps, these two, and this one right here. These ones are out. I've got the new caps in here. These two caps are a bit taller. They're about one and a half times the size as this one is. So, but hopefully they won't uh, have any interference with the top part of the, uh, the board. I think it should be okay, especially with this setup. But we'll try again and, um, you know, give it a shot and see if it works or not. Um, this is even, you know saying that the board itself works, but we'll go and give it a test nonetheless. Uh, this part here, try to clean up a little bit more. It seems all right. Got to get a new timekeeper battery for the top of that and switch over the components. Also, I had to get a jumper from the other board uh, because this one didn't have the jumper here. So we'll get all of the different components that are left here pushed in and uh, snapped into place. And then we'll go ahead and swap out the other board and give it a test. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so I've got all the components swapped out from the other board, and I've got this one back in here. Got the harness attached to it, and I figured we could give this a check and see what happens. Uh, I haven't had a chance to test this yet, so I'm not sure what's going to happen or if it's going to turn out or not, but we'll give it a shot here, so let's hope for the best. Let's uh, give this thing some power. The fan's turning on now. See if any 
anything changes here or not. There's uh, no video coming on the screen, so I'm not sure exactly what's up with that. I think this, this board had to be on 24 kilohertz, so that might be a big issue. This thing's flashing green, which is probably a good thing. I can't remember, it's been so long. Oh yeah, this one says out of range. So, and since I changed the timekeeper battery, I'm sure there's going to be some issues with, uh, like, sound, if it's going to be on the, uh, was it no sound? Let's see. Well, it looks like that seems to be working okay. Uh, yeah, maybe demo sound to be turned off, I'm not sure. I wish I had a 24 kilohertz monitor here. I'll have to try and see about hooking up something else. Well, for the most part, it seems like it's uh, at least doing somewhat it should be doing. <laughs> Once again, it's kind of hard to tell here since I don't have a, any video. So I guess I'll try and see what I can figure out about getting a display on here. Hopefully I can get this thing to display, but uh, for the most part, this is what it's doing so far. So I'll get on that and then uh, be back in a little bit. All right, so, well, it's got a little bit darker out, and it's going to be a little harder to see here. But uh, what I did is I went around this soundboard here. This is the one that I wound up replacing, and I started changing out components. The two components that I didn't change out were these two DACs right here, and uh, I got them uh, out of the other one that were right here, and uh, put in the two new ones, and finally was able to get a sound. Realized that this one here, there's something that's uh, involved with this one that is just not working, uh, whether it be one of the chips over here that's uh, causing it not to work, or this uh, uh, like saddle that it sits in here maybe cracked or uh, not making good enough contact but when I put the other one in I swapped these two out and put these in here I was able to get sound so uh, the only problem is now is the hard drive died and uh, the compact flash that I have here is also pretty much shot so I mean if we go and turn this thing on I'm using a Dell monitor over here on the side and you should be able to see it pop on for a second here but you can hear it, now it uh, comes up with the boot sound, but it says uh, found no valid home blocks and uh, what is that? QIO error EOF on file. So it came up with that uh, before even with the original hard drive. Now with the original hard drive sometimes you can get it to boot, sometimes it won't. I haven't had a chance to get this thing to start up with the new chips in. Uh, having those seated in, it hasn't had a chance to try and fire up. So every time I do that it does the same thing as this one. But just to show you, let's see, just my luck it'll probably wind up starting up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very, very pleased. Finally, after a couple of years of um, trying to figure out what is wrong with this thing, uh, getting that used board and fixing it up a little bit has allowed this thing to start up. And I'm very pleased about that. This is a very rare board. It's getting more and more difficult to find. Uh, I have my Gauntlet Dark Legacy board, which is also using a compact flash right now due to the hard drive dying. I tried that out today and realized that the hard drive had died, so put the compact flash in there, and that worked. But, <laughs> I mean, these hard drives are just prone to failure. I know the compact flash will as well, but uh, at least they last a little bit longer. Let's turn this on again, and I'll show you guys what uh, it's doing. You can hear it wind up, but uh, and it should do the same thing. I don't know if it's going to... Now you can see it's doing the same thing now. It says uh, there's an error there. So I'm one step closer to getting this thing working back into proper uh, condition and then one step further away. <laughs> it's kind of one of those processes, but I think what I'll do next is I'll try and pick up a compact flash uh, drive for it and, uh, you know, just to get this thing all working again and plug that in. And hopefully that should be the end of this nightmare. Should be able to have my gauntlet boards back up again and I'll be very pleased about that, but nonetheless, just want to share, uh, share this with you guys here for right now, and yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. I'm still just happy this thing makes a, a tone when it starts up, because it didn't do it before. And it's consistent, so that's a good thing. One step closer. Good board.